G'day everyone, welcome to another edition of Fly Fishing in Nature's Realm. Now, in this episode, I'm going to be tying a fly that imitates the tadpole. And if you think tadpoles aren't out there, um, you're sadly mistaken, let me tell you. Because I come across um, a lot of lakes along the shoreline and you'll hear frogs everywhere. And uh, when you hear those frogs, you know that uh, before that, there were tadpoles around. So we want to imitate a fly um, if we ever come to a lake just before springtime. is would be the best time to uh, put a tadpole uh, fly in amongst the uh, shallow shoreline. Um, and uh, you can really become successful in catching trout. Um, with a tadpole fly. Now um, this uh, fly that I'm going to tie is called the Duckamole uh, Tadpole and it's named after a stream or a river in New South Wales and uh, this was written about this fly by Peter Louvre and uh, it is a great pattern. Now um, if you want to know, you know the extent of frog populations along lake shorelines. Watch this footage right now. You'll be very amazed how many frogs uh, can be along the shoreline. Let's uh, watch this. All right, listen to the frogs, incredible. Okay, so as you can see, um, frogs um, can populate uh, a lot of our lake shorelines. And as I say, it's great to have a tadpole fly in your fly box um, so that we can tackle before the frogs uh, actually start to uh, uh, develop. So, let's tie this fly, the duckamole, the tadpole, and uh, the materials that you need, I'll have put up um, above me right now. And as you can see, you can pause your computer right now, and you can uh, write down all the materials you'll need, and have a, uh, a reference note uh, to this pattern. Okay, so let's start to tie this fly. It's a great one, guys. All right, 60 thread, black. We start off just uh, just below the hook eye, and then advance our way down to the bend of the hook. So we're basically in line with the barb. Alright. Now the next material we need is either black or brown marabou. Now whatever marabou you do to buy or, or you select, make sure the marabou has long fibres guys. This is imperative. If you don't have you know, decent length in those fibers of the marabou you know this is going to be too frustrating for you if you've got short ones all right it's very fiddly and uh, the longer makes it so much better um, to actually handle so long fibers on the marabou so first of all we take a bunch of the fibers and we make sure that we bring them together nice and even and then the tips are going to be or represent the tail of the tadpole so 
judge that in make sure it's in proportion and then let's tie that down all right excellent now as you can see that section of the marabou is going to form the body or part of the body we might have to add in an extra uh, bunch of marabou as we go about halfway but before we do that we need to tie in a body hackle now the body hackle that we will tie in is a blue dart now again I use the genetic uh, hackles here and this is for a dry fly you could use a hen feather but you don't want the fibers of the body hackle to be too long so I just tend to sparsely wrap the body hackle from a genetic cape feather so we select the right size And then we create a stem. We tie that in at this point here. And advance that forward of the marabou fibers. We'll probably go about three quarters of the way up the hook chain. Okay, so we've got the body hackle feather there tied in. And if there was a little bit of surplus there, we can cut that away. Now we take that marabou and now we form the body. Now we can do this um, using a dubbing loop. Uh, is another great way of doing it. Or we can just do it with our fingers. And like I say, you've got to have long fibers for it to be really, um, really easy to handle. As we can see, we haven't filled it up completely with this amount of fibers. So we tie off this part here and around the three quarter point. Just cut away that excess we don't want. And then we select another bunch of the fibers. Again, level them out. We tie it in by the tip. Now that, those tip fibers just sticking and pointing out there, we need to remove them. Just snip them off with your scissors. And then we advance again the thread to just below the eye of the hook. then we continue to build up the body of the top pot.
そうだろう Surplus, Let's snip that away. Now we've got some loose ends there, so we need to clip that almost to the shape that we require. So that's the body basically done so far. Now we take the tail, make sure that's nice and straight there. Now we take the body hackle or the blue done body hackle and we just, you know, it's, it's not a dry fly, we just want a few turns around the body. Just sparse turns, they'll have no effect in floating the fly because when the marabou gets wet, she'll sink. No worries about that. But it adds a bit of shape to the fly. and adds life to the fly as well it pulsates under the water just looks great should have done that, we tie that off Snip away that feather there. Now we need to go back towards the bend level just a little bit because the last step requires us to tie in. white hen feather okay so here I've got a just a cheap Indian cape um, this is great to buy these um, just for your hen um, feathers and um, you know if you're just tying tails you know you don't need to buy expensive capes for different sections of the fly and so forth. So we select the right size white, white feather here. And strip away all the rubbish fibers at the base. Tie that in, roll it right behind the eye of the hook there. Now, 
snip away the stem there and we just need one turn of the hackle just one little fiddly you could probably use aqua pliers might be a good idea here Snip away the surplus. And we want those white hen feather fibers to extend backwards. So we push them all back and then wrap our thread. back to trap those fibers into the 45 degree angle just a few more turns there That's good. Right now we will quick finish. Snip the thread away. We can manipulate those fibers a little bit more with our fingers, and then we put on a drop of UV clear fly finish okay which is awesome in its respect of using the UV light and here's the torch give it a I no, really you only need a couple of uh, seconds um, to harden that the UV light hardens that, but I tend to find with a lot of light, um, pays to give it a little bit extra, and that's plenty, okay, and then make sure that the eye is clear, like so. It's nice and clear now. If there's any stray fibers, we can snip them away. All right. So that's the Duckamole tadpole. Um, great pattern. Easy to tie. A bit fiddly. All right. But it's essential 
that you um, use long marabou fibers. Now, when you go to a tackle shop, you can get some uh, marabou that's very short, probably half of that in uh, length, and don't buy it, okay? Because every fly pattern that um, that you tie that needs marabou fibers you need a good length the longest you can get and I've seen some that are just incredibly long um, longer than the one I have here and you could possibly with those that type of marabou you could possibly put in the tail and do the whole body in one go so that's what you are uh, can expect from uh, using uh, super long marabou fibers um, in your tying. So have a few of these in your box guys because um, they can be very very uh, handy in certain situations and um, I suppose a lot of uh, the biggest question would be you know when would you know when to use it? Well you know, if you can find tadpoles in the water, which can be very difficult. All right now, away from the water, you tend to find tadpoles. Um, you know, in um, sort of like bulrushes and um, tussock grass, where rain and uh, the winter's rain has accumulated puddles of water. You find a lot of tadpoles in those uh, little puddles and so forth. Um, and they're visually you're able to see them but along the shoreline um, you know they can be a bit difficult so when would you know when to use it well if you're fishing and you can't see any food items you can't see any insects both aquatic and terrestrial right? you know it's that time of the year when tadpoles will be about try one put it on and use it as a searching fly all right and work it really close in along the shoreline and um, yeah you may come up very successful with that all right guys that's another one and now in the next episode I'm going to tie a uh, frog fly and um, there's a whole host of different frog flies you can tie frog flies um, in their simplest form um, and it's very easy or you can be really complicated um, I'll probably try and show you both um, a really complicated um, very long uh, tie of a frog pattern and one that you can tie up very quickly so um, that'll be probably the next flight that we will um, we'll try alright guys Thanks again for watching and see you in the next edition of Fly Fishing in Nature's Realm. Bye for now.